I am Carolina Sarrudo from the National Meteorological Service of Argentina. I am going to start with the lecture one, talking about general aspects of warning systems. An overview of the main themes we are going to see in this lecture. Which is the purpose of a warning system? Which are the components of a warning system? What the WMO guidelines 11 and 50 is about? And finally, different types of warning systems. Starting with the purpose of a warning system. The design of an early warning system is one of the components that integrate disaster risk management. About what the purpose is, it depends on each specific job, but Surely it has something to do with prevention, to be more prepared to face threats, to minimize the impacts, and having a tool that helps the task of the decision maker. One important thing here is that the design of an early warning system not only depends on the objective, what you want to prevent, but also depends on the available information, technical and human resources. A warning system is not only composed by the forecast of the natural hazard. To warn of a possible threat, it is necessary to take knowledge of the characteristics of each place. So, continuum monitoring and risk knowledge of the region is also needed. But a warning system is useless if it is not well understood and doesn't reach everyone everywhere. So, communication and dissemination is another important component of the system, as well as the ability to respond to the emergency. The interrelationship of all these components requires coordination and collaboration between them, and the only way to do this is with an interdisciplinary approach. In this sense, in the National Meteorological Service of Argentina, for example, we have the Meteorology and Society Department formed by social scientists who work in the coordination of these components. The paradigm of forecast and warning services is changing. Met services are used to talk about what the weather will be, but society needs to know what the weather will do and how to ensure their safety and protect their property. That's why the World Meteorological Organization has written the guidelines on multi-hazard impact-based forecast and warning services, WMO 11 and 50. These guidelines offer recommendations and share good practices about the actions that should be taken to be able to develop impact-based forecast. Some of the most important themes are working with users and stakeholders, training, and standardization of the messages like using icons or color coding. Most of these themes are in still discussion about which is the best way to do this, and there is uh, no unique right answer. That's why the WMO is still working on looking for good practices and different examples of impact-based forecast implementation. There are different approaches to move from weather to impact-based forecasts. A summary of the key points that come from the document. First of all, partnerships. Med services can't and must not do this alone. We have to develop relationships and understand our partnerships' needs. About impact-based information and the service development, it is necessary to develop the specific framework with partners, establish the relationships between the natural hazard and impacts, vulnerability and exposure with case studies. With respect to the functional requirements for IDF, all themes related to infrastructure, data management, dissemination, data sharing strategies, format. Human capacity development, it is so important the training of the med services staff as well as impact-based forecast users. 
And the last one, validation. It is important to develop impact-based tools and metrics to evaluate what goes right and wrong with the system. At the moment, WMO is updating these guidelines. The second edition will be published in late 2020 and will include six new chapters based on recommendations taken from a symposium of service providers, users and funders hosted by the UK's Met Office in December of last year. You can see more details about these outcomes in the final report of the expert team meeting I show in this slide. The chapters would address different aspects related to methodologies for collecting, classifying, understanding and sharing exposure, vulnerability and impact information, communication of risk, including, for example, the use of colors and the provision of uncertainty information, building coalitions to support impact-based forecast development, training, measure the socio-economic benefits of impact-based forecasts and warning services, and the role of advisory experts in communication and promotion of a better dialogue and understanding of user needs. So which are the elements to consider if we want to turn into an IBF warning system? As we saw in the first slide, one of the objectives of a warning system is to minimize impacts. But the risk of impact is the result not only of the hazard, but also vulnerability and exposure. This means that the highest risk may not be where the weather is worst, and that's why the three components need to be considered. So it is not just about the hazard and thresholds. This figure represents the relationship among the key elements of an impact forecast system. There are three possible, maybe more, pathways towards estimating an assessment of impact for a given hydrometeorological hazard. The solid arrow represents the modeling approach, where each element is explicitly calculated. The ideal world for me. This requires detailed data of vulnerability and exposure. The dot orange arrow relates a more subjective approach where qualitative information of impact is collected from the expert partners. This information represents the sum of their experience and allows the estimation of impact from the magnitude of the hazard. The red arrows represent an approach whereby the magnitude of the likely impact is related directly from the magnitude of the meteorological hazard. In this approach, there is no account of exposure or vulnerability, only the magnitude of the hazard. It is important to highlight here the need of partnerships and the availability of impact, exposure and vulnerability data. Depending on the system, will be the temporal and spatial resolution of impact information needed. Seeing this from an operational perspective, in this figure it is illustrated a suggested application of the impact warning concept made by the UK's Met Office, combining impact with likelihood to create a risk matrix, where risk is expressed through a traffic light color shame. Here the impact incorporates an assessment of vulnerability and exposure. Green means that no severe hydrometeorological hazard is expected. Yellow means be aware. Orange means be prepared and red take action. In contrast to the traditional threshold based weather warning system, this approach allows progressively express changing expectations of risk as a function of varying exposure, vulnerability, and the hydrometeorological likelihood. So it can be seen that the assessment of vulnerability and exposure can change the color of the warning, compared with the situation if only likelihood would be considered. We can have, for example, 
a yellow or orange warning with low likelihood but high impact. Meteorological thresholds are part of the decision here, but they are not the only thing to be considered. Now, after knowing the elements to consider, the next question would be, how can this transition be done? This figure shows a conceptual model where we can see that the transition from weather information to weather impact is done by successive steps that goes from just weather and climate analysis to the application of mitigation strategies through translating weather to hazards and placing into context to have an impact estimation. The conceptual model I mentioned can be seen from a met service perspective in the following way. We can describe different stages in the evolution of early warning systems where we can improve thresholds by using climatology of each region or each location. In the following step, we can combine our climatology with other parameters, like for example, relationship between impacts and information of exposure. And in the further step, including vulnerability information. So we can have different types of warning related not only to the kind of information available, but also related to the analysis that can be done with the information and the relationships that can be established between the different factors. These sequential steps are illustrated in this table, which shows how the same warning would be communicated in a different way, depending on the factor incorporated. The example considered is about a heavy rain event. It is not the objective to read the table completely, but just to highlight some things. For example, look how the speech changes from talking only about the weather in the first two rows to the third one, which has vulnerability information related to thresholds defined by user. In the second row it says rainfall accumulations of 30 millimeters to 40 millimeters and in the third one it, it talks about intensities of 3 millimeters in 10 minutes leading to overflow. So of course here you don't only need the user's information but also you need a system capable of predicting intensities with a level of confidence. There is another important note to make here, and is related to the text in italic in the third row. It says that this type of warning would typically be issued to a municipal authority only. This means that the type of warning also depends on the receiver and the action needed to be taken. So probably, the implementation of impact-based warnings also implies the capability of issuing different types of warnings to different users given the same weather condition. This requires human and technical resources. In this slide, you can see in the last row how would be a complete impact warning. It is absolutely focused on the impact due to the three elements of risk, hazard, vulnerability and exposure. It refers to the lengthened on time journey and traffic disruption due to localized flooding caused by a heavy rain event. Now I will show you a couple of examples. In this case it is shown the UK's Met Office warning system. The first thing you can see is the color of the warning level, in this case it's yellow for rain, and the area under warning. In the text, you can see an impact-based speech, not focused on the weather, but putting emphasis in the impacts expected and some recommendations in the what should I do part. If you go to further details, there you can see a description of the weather expected and the impact matrix to understand the reason of the level of warning decided. Meteo France also has a color code warning and recommendations, 
but they don't use the impact matrix. So here we don't have different possibilities of orange, for example, depending on the likelihood and the risk of impact. But impact information is considered together with the meteorological one to decide the level of the warning. They use climatological thresholds, but they are not determinant. So it may happen, for example, that the knowledge related to the impact can change the color of the warning suggested by the threshold. In Argentina, we are working on this kind of approach in the development of our future color code warning system. In Meteo France, they also have a plenty of experience in making assessments and validation of the warnings. And this involves stakeholders taking into account forecasts and reports of impact information. So a summary of some of the key points we have seen up to now. Collaboration and permanent dialogue between meteorological services and emergency agencies or users in general. For meteorological information to be suitable for specific dangerous situations, it is necessary to understand the potential impacts of meteorological phenomena, as well as the uncertainties involved. Importance of impacts, vulnerability and exposure data, and the infrastructure required. Warning systems must be adjusted to available information, technical and human resources. And the last one, interdisciplinary approach and partnerships. Thank you.